Welcome to Let's Talk About It with Thelma Snipe, the director of From Brokenness to Wholeness. From Brokenness to Wholeness is a faith-based, outreach, transformational, radical root ministry that serves pain at the root. So have a seat and let's talk about it. Hello, my name is Thelma Stein and I'm the director of an organization, From Brokenness to Wholeness. From Brokenness to Wholeness is a faith-based outreach, transformational, radical root ministry, serving emotional pain at the root. Because if it's not served at the root, it's not gonna go any place. Let me share our vision with you. Our vision is to have a trauma rate free world, city, state, place of employment, churches, home, judicial system. I am a friend to the survivor. I am going to enter your pain with you. I'm going to have faith for you until you can have faith. And I'm going to believe with you until you can believe. But I do not come along. On today, we're going to continue on at the subject we've been before, and that is sexual assault. Later on, we will bring some more information to you. We bring you awareness, knowledge, sp uh, spiritual mentoring. We're going to help you out. Uh, we're talking about certain, certain pain and sexual assault, the vi sexual violence, and suicide. That's what we're on today. The name of this segment is called Let's Talk About It because we have so many secrets locked in us that are really causing us to be physically ill. But it's because we don't share what happened to us that we did not like. Today, I'm gonna to introduce you to the powerless, it's powerless to be broken. It may be obvious to the abused people, but it's not clear. Sexual assault was never invited. Nobody asked you to violate us. It's never been invited, nor was it asked for. Let's get this straight right now. You may be surprised of the sickness of some people. Abuse strips the ability to choose, take someone's choice. How would you like for your choice to be taken away? How would you like for a choice to be taken away of someone that you love? Your wife, your daughter, your son, your mother, your sister, or even you. His choice was taken away. One of the best choice that we had the power to have has been taken away from us. If it happened one time or 100 times, it still happened. It doesn't change the degree that the choice was denied. The powerless was experienced and the dignity was assaulted. You not only assaulted our body, you assaulted our dignity. We lost that. There are at least three forces that was experienced. The ability to end the relentless pain. Number two, the ability to stop the abuse. Number three, to end the pain in the soul. Those were taken from us. Sexual assault never began at a first point of contact. It never began right there. It is already in the mind of the one who's considering. And that's where the beginning, can, beginning of it is, is in the thought. Remember this, it's a metric of some level, emotional, neglect, coldness, and fear. Mm -hmm. once, the abuse, once the abuse has occurred, then threats of pain, the victim get threat of what the person going to do to them if they said it, if they tell it. So now the victim has to make a choice to be quiet. But here's the thing. The shame is just as powerful as that. The victim can be afraid that they're going to get burned alive. And let me tell you something. An abuser is dangerous. Here's the reason why. Because the enemy came to steal, kill, and to destroy. This is work of illness and the enemy. The powerless was experienced. There are three forces I'm sorry, the heart aches. No immediately recourse for relief except the sole numbing choice to abandon a sense of being alive. 
better suicide. Remember when I told you about my suicide that I almost, almost did it? That's what it does. As one victim says, it's like someone has flushed suey in your home and the smell could not be tolerated unless she destroyed the sense of the smell. We're talking about sexual assault. There's a cost for being powerless. Powerless is never a gift. Sexual assault can cause a splitting which lead to a wall of denial, which leads to coping mechanism. Because denial separates the man from the agony in the heart, divides the good and the bad. The internal struggle causes you to forget. You start forgetting. The victim seen as a stranger to their own source. They become a stranger. I remember an attack that took place in Chicago a few years ago, maybe about six years ago. This child was 14 or 15 years old. She was a smart child. She was on her way from the library home. By the time she got home, this guy was following her. Mind you, he had just been released, released from jail. By the time she got to her door to let herself in, he pushed himself in with her and he violated her just as long as he wanted to. When he finally left her alive, she made a call to her mom and she said, mom, I've been assaulted. So the mom went where she was and they knew who it was. They knew who it was. They found him real quick. This child was so smart. She was head, headed out to Washington when she graduated to be one of the judges. I can't think of the name of it now, but that's where she was headed to. They had a trial. She never did get well. They had a trial. And every time she would go to court during that trial, he would sit in the room, which I don't think, I don't even think that abusers have any business being in the courtroom. I don't, I, until it's time for them to testify. He would sit there and mock her and he would speak out and say, isn't she pretty? So she got to the place where she couldn't take it anymore. So the mother agreed to a plea deal. So when they did the plea deal, they gave him eight years. That's all. While he took a life, I want you, you're going to hear that, they gave him eight years. But what the mother did do, she took it to the senator and they went to the White House and they had a law change because if he took a life, then he should have life because he took one. So she never did get well. She came downstairs one night. She was on medication. She stayed in the hospital, I don't know how long, because she could not even walk. She came home. Her mom said she came downstairs one night. So she was lying on the couch. And she said, Mama, may I lay down with you? And the mother said, she said, of course you can. She laid there a while, and she went back upstairs. And she told her mother good night and that she loved her. She went back upstairs. And the next morning, the mother told the brother to wake her up for school, to get ready for school. Went up to wake her up, she was deceased. She had taken her own life. That's where a whole lot of suicide come from. Whenever you hear that someone has committed suicide, always believe, I wonder what their pain were. At 14 years old, she tried to make it. She had to take pain medicine every day, even that had been a year. That's what happened. So you might say the internal, I said the internal struggle leads to forgetfulness. I am here at this time for the victims of sexual assault. Like I said before, I am a, I am a friend to the survivor. One might ask Miss Knight, why is wholeness so powerful? Glad you asked. Because it's radical and because it includes a gift from God. That's why it's powerful. I said in our similar vis uh, vision, wholeness respond quickly to build community, resources, and talent, both inside and outside. 
we are going to inspire you, spiritual mentor you, and enable those at all levels to act with freedom, power, and community, and help build resources. Who holding the steam from, and is indeed a positive inner alignment. That's another reason why it's so powerful. A one sense of identity. When we finish, we will have, you will have freedom, responsibility, accountability. Listen what the great Nelson Mandela said once. To be free is not merely to cast off the chain or to be whole, but to live in a way to respect others and enhance the freedom of all that is really free. When someone is expressed, people are fully present, fully engaged. When someone expressed the wholeness, they are fully engaged and continue to be rewarded exceedingly. Wholeness is often hid in the language that we often betrays our world without awareness. This happened just a few weeks ago when one of the high profile guys got out of jail. He was supposed to do three years. He only did two. I know you know who I'm talking about. There was a person that spoke very negatively and it affected and insulted victims. Those that heard it or those that write it. This is my uh, information to you. If you ever get in a conversation where it's about sexual assault or whatever, if you don't know what you're talking about, and if you have not been through it, don't touch it. Don't touch it. Because no matter how much education you think you have, ignorance will still stick its head up. And this is what happened. And the victim was offended. After courage come our connection, which is the source of our identity, we deserve to be, whole, to be heard without fear, without exclusion, without alienation, discrimination, and manipulation. We deserve to be heard. The issue outside are a mirror of the inside. Here's some benefits of wholeness. The benefits is healing change the physical state. We're talking about healing versus wholeness. Wholeness change the, the spiritual state. Healing can change the outer appearance. Wholeness change the inside condition. Healing cleans the body. Wholeness cleans the heart. Healing deal with receiving. Wholeness deal with giving. All of that going on, caring, sharing. We say, heal me so I can look better. Wholeness say, heal me so I can be better. Heal me so I can have friends. Wholeness say, make me whole so I can be a friend to the survivor. Heal me so I won't hurt anymore. Wholeness say, make me whole but I want to feel the pain of others. Every problem that we have, God has a solution for it. Jesus beckoned us to come on to wholeness. That's why from brokenness to wholeness is here. Here's the thing, the choice is ours. Just as he asked the lame man if he wanted to be whole, so he asked us today, do we want to be whole? We're talking about, let's talk about it. I get it. I get it. I have it now. Sometimes the thing we experience seems too painful to face. We'd rather ignore the pain. Let me ask you this. I'm Dr. Phil now. Let me ask you this. How is that working for you? We can't sweep our abuse under a rug and pretend it's not there. It's not going anywhere. That's why Jesus asked us. Do we want to be whole? We must participate in the process. Trauma and pain is not going any place unless it is radically addressed. I've got a niece right now that's in ICU. They don't know if she's going to make it or not. The only thing is wrong with her is she is full of unaddressed trauma. 
from a very early age. It just continued throughout her life. But of course, she won't let me help her. But that's why she is physically ill and emotionally ill. But she's more emotional ill than she is physical. Freedom is not a passive engagement. It's not. We must bring our pain, shame, and hurt to God. I can stand before you and say Jesus is a Jesus of wholeness. You believe in it? So to believe him for wholeness. Do you want to be whole? That's the question I have for you today. Do you really want to be whole? Really, really, we're here for you. All the power of heaven resides in Jesus Christ. He's God in the flesh. Only Jesus can make us whole and restore, but he will only do it with our permission. Don't think he's going to just give us a dream. And in the dream, he's going to say, I believe you're broken. I believe you need to be whole. It's not going to work like that. He's going to send his servant to approach you and to bring you the awareness and the information and the knowledge that I am bringing you today. Always come to this meeting with a pen and a pad or put the notes in your phone because we're going to share some things that you're going to wish you had. Even if you don't want it, listen, even if you don't want it, someone you know want it. Someone that haven't told you. And let me tell you this, you might say they don't do that in my family. Let me tell you this, they do it in every family. They just keep it a secret. Oh yes it is, there's hardly a family across this world that has not been touched with sexual assault. Jesus does miraculous work in wholeness for wounded souls. We walk around a mere shell. We are mere shell of who God wants us to be because we don't know who we are. If you're broken and just about everybody is, whether it's from sexual assault or not, you don't know who you are. He wants us to know. Because we refuse to come to the one that can make us whole, we don't know. We grow comfortably. We, we, we get com comfortable in our midst. In some shape or form, we form identity around our pain, victimhood, or bitterness. This identity settles into the crack, and we see ourselves through the lens of our brokenness. That's how we see ourselves. It occurred to me that many people are afraid to be whole. They're afraid of it. They have no idea who they are because their entire identity is centered around the abuse they experience. So now they're afraid to be free. It's terrifying. When wholeness is achieved, you will understand who you are. You will never know who you are unless you hold. Like I said, more than sexual assault, we are talking about sexual assault, but more than that, people are broken about something that went on in their life that they didn't give that permission to happen. We are going to introduce to you, introduce you to your health, yourself, sorry. Introduce you to yourself. Because like I said, outside of holiness, Wholeness, you know, a bit more know who you are in the man, man in the moon. It's like a tragedy. We're like a tragedy ready to happen because we're broken. Don't be one of the fatalities. Don't do that. With knowledge and awareness, you're going to discover who you are in from brokenness to wholeness. We we are like a blind person wearing glasses. Why doesn't a blind person need glasses? They're already blind. 
Well, that's the way we are because we are not whole. We will find out who our purpose, what our purpose is, our dream, pull up a seat, relax. We're going on a journey from brokenness to wholeness. There you have it. The truth about ourselves is to be whole. Everyone deserves to be whole. It is not yours. It does not belong to you. And God is begging for you to give that pain to him. We are under the hip of law. What you share with us is with us. The only way we can share some things for marketing is that you give us written permission to do it. We have to have written permission. But I'm free to tell mine. I am free and I'm not ashamed because I found out telling my pain, God began to make me whole and then I help you because now you have hid it so long that you didn't you didn't tell anybody about it. You didn't tell anyone. Or you told one person and they told you, don't tell anybody else. I don't care if it is a relative. It doesn't make any difference. Tell it on him too. Because, let me, I hate that. I hate to hurt your little heart. But you're not the first one that this abuser raped. You will not be the last one. So, when you don't tell it, then he's going to get some money else. He's going to keep doing it. He is not going to stop doing it. I hope for brokenness to hold it can help someone because we're ready. It's just a phone call away. We are known in 34 cities, 34 states, and 41 cities. We are known there with Memphis being one of them. We, we are reachable. We're going to bring guests on our on our show. We're going to have guests and we're going to have those who will share their testimony with you. Some of the most greatest testimony that you ever heard in your life. It's unbelievable how they walk up out of brokenness and walk into wholeness. And we want you to do the same thing. You deserve to be happy. You, If you stay sick one day, that's one day too much. I was sick over 40 something years and nobody knew that I was ill. They thought who they saw and dealt with that it was me. No, that was my illness. I will also share this with you. I remember uh, that I used to have dreams and I could not understand the dream, but in the dream, I could always hear myself crying. I would just cry. I would just cry, I just cry. And it was such a deep cry. And I'm not a cry baby. And I said to myself when I woke up and I noticed that tears was coming out of my face. And I said to myself, what is wrong with me? Nobody is bothering me. No, no one is doing anything to me. What is wrong? I could not understand. But in that dream, I would cry so deep. Because see what had happened, I had buried that little broken girl in there and never addressed it. It was never addressed. Because you remember, I told you in the first segment, I didn't even know that it was called rape. And the little girl was trying to get some attention. The little broken girl. And when God brought this ministry in from brokenness to holy, it is so amazing how he does things. When he brought it in, as he made others whole, he made me whole. What you think about that? That's the way God worked. And guess what? I have not had a dream from that little girl, that little broken girl again. And that went on for years. We're talking about years, a lot of years. Every so often, maybe once or twice a year, I would cry and just cry and just cry. But when God released that gift within me, then I was whole. I want to thank you today. There you have it. I want to thank you today. Let me leave this with you. Mm -hmm. This is an inspirational world. 
worked for you. Say, Lord, help me to believe the truth about myself, no matter how beautiful it is. Because I know somebody that told you that you're not beautiful. I don't care how beautiful you are. You know, the devil tell a lie. That's what he does. And when he put it in the thoughts of people, then they speak it to you. But God got something for you. Help me to believe the truth about myself, no matter how beautiful it is. Remember, there is a phone number that's going to come across. We're going to look for you to reach out to us to, through that phone number. When I come next time, I will have some information for you on how to help your children, the little children and the grown-up children, and the one that think they grown. You know, we got two or three types. You got the one that are grown up and the one that think they're grown. I'm going to bring you some information so you can teach your children so they know how to be safe. Tell you one thing, stop letting your children go stay all night with people. How you going to control what goes on in another house? People are not who all are not always who you think you see. That's not people. No, 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 no. Keep your children with you. I know you want some space from them. I have two children. They're good and grown now. But I stayed with them. I kept my children. Keep your children. That's the only way that you can protect them. Share, I'm going to share one more little story with you. This is, uh, someone told me one that they had this great granddaughter and this child was a two years old. So this child would cry if just anybody tried to change her diaper. She would allow her mother to ch change her diaper. She would allow her grandmother and her grandmother, great grandmother, but the rest of them, she would cry. So as she sat there and shared that with me, I said, something is going on. I said, something is going on. So then she let me know that the mother of the child let the child go spend the night of the weekend with the father. And I thought to myself, oh my goodness. And the father has a sister that was, anyway, I said, that's your problem right there. I said, that's the problem right there. I said, y'all need to keep this child as much as you can with you all. Thank you so much for listening. There you have it. We'll see you again on our next segment. Remember, let's talk about it. You have been watching Let's Talk About It with Thelma Snipe, the director of From Brokenness to Wholeness. And please remember, it is our goal to make sure that you're whole again.